everyone. Welcome back to another video on E20 Zone TV. It is me, Lucas, and Clive is joining me for the news that has finally been confirmed. We've all known it's going to happen for about the past 48 hours, but my oh my, has it been dramatic and just stretched out as far as possible with, with FIFA threatening sanctions and investigation, Leon mad, Batiste don't know what the hell's going on, but we've made it. But before we start, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, hit the bell notification so you're the first one to watch the videos, be in the stream, leave a comment, and like the video if you haven't already. And we have a membership link down in the description if you'd like to support us further. But um, we are finally here. Today is the day. Side Ben Rama and Pablo Fornals have both been announced to their respective clubs. They have parted ways with West Ham. A very emotional day for all who who uh, love both or whatever you may feel. So uh, Ben Rama on his way to Lyon for about uh, reported 15 million pounds in total. I think the loan fee is about 4 million pound. And Pablo Fornals on to Batiste for 7 million pound fee with some add-ons we do not know of. But Clive, I'll let you start off. Uh, what do you think about the moves um, generally first? Uh, I think the Ben Rama one is a bit of a coup on our part. Um, you know, we purchased him for a little bit more than what than what we uh, have sold him on for. Um, so I think to get as much as we have for him is, is not too bad. It's not much of a loss. Um, I think it's the right thing to do. He wasn't going to get much game time. He hasn't shown his full potential from Brentford. Um, and yeah, I think it was time that he uh, had been moved on out of the out of the settings. Um, I don't think we would have got the same fee if, if we waited until the summer. Um, so I think it was the right time, right uh, the right move for, for both parties, realistically. Um, when it comes to four nows, Again, correct thing to do. Time to move on. Emotional, uh, for me personally. Yeah, I know it is for you. Um, oh. I mean, look, the the problem is obviously we increased his contract by a year just so we could actually get some money for him. Otherwise, this month he would have gone for free. Yeah. Um, so you know, I know I've seen a lot of people online moaning about the fee, saying it's very low for him, but. I don't actually think it's a low amount. Yes, maybe we could have squeezed a couple of million more. Um, but when you look at what's left of his contract, it's either you you let go of him now for a small cut fee, or if you wait to the summer, you're probably only going to get four or five million. And then come next January, he'd be going for free. Yeah. Yeah, for me, um, I'll just give my short piece about what I think about everything. Um, for now, I am in the bit of a camp where I do think we sold him for, for peanuts a bit, but I have a feeling we just really uh we granted his wishes is is a mutual thing because I think not only does he think the world of us and have absolute respect for us, I think we we think the same for him. And um it's it's more emotional for me seeing Pablo go because I think you can agree, no matter what you thought of his quality, which I thought he was a, a good player for us. I think his purchase in total was a successful buy, but not a lot of players walk through those doors and really go through the full experience where they, they experience a down, a down spell. They see success. They see an upward tick and they win a trophy with us. And he adopted just so many of our traditions and things we do. And he, I think he really bought in to the club. And I think that shows with the supporters as well. Today was very emotional on Twitter with his, uh, Goodbye video and the announcement, I must say. But uh, with, with Saeed Ben Rama, again, for me personally, not one of my my favorite players, but he is forever ingrained in an integral part of our history. Scoring that goal in Prague, you were, you were there in person. I was in a nightclub with Mitch. Something I'll never forget. And, um, yeah, just – um, and it's, it's sad with Ben Rama because I really did think he had – kind of the world at his feet. I thought his potential was was endless. It just really did not work out with West Ham. And I, I think it was time for both to move on and all that. So I it mean, is. It, who knows? We could end up seeing Pablo Fornells win the Conference League two years running. 
Oh. Betis obviously failed in the Europa League, dropped down. And Crazy one. Could happen. Yeah, could happen. But all in all, um, I think Fornals was. I think he was a, a decent success. Actually, no. Let's just let's just put it right. I think both of them in the end were good buys. Uh, ben Rama, integral part of our history, wins us a trophy to an extent, and Pablo Fornals, a fan favorite for the rest of our lives. But um, yeah. Let's let's just talk about it real quick. I know I already mentioned, it, but what would you say are your fondest memories of each? Uh, Ben Rama, there's not too many, I won't lie. I mean, his first season during the COVID year was a bit, a little bit of a letdown. I, I thought, in my up. opinion, I thought that was his best, personally. Really? I mean, yeah. he only scored, I think, one goal in the Premier League that season. But he, um, I, I actually think the follow-up season was his best, which okay. was um, 21-22 season, which was his best goal-scoring season in the terms of the Premier League, but not overall. Mm -hmm. um across all competitions but i think that was perhaps where we saw the peak of his um of his, his powers, powers yeah. yeah um which obviously also worked in the 20 uh I, I mean i guess perhaps in a weird way if you think about it the season where we didn't have lingard allowed him to sort of uh appear more for us i guess because 2021 we all think of, of Lingard in that latter end of that season, unfortunately. So that's perhaps why I don't think Ben Rama is more of a integral part of that. My favorite, but, uh, my favorite Ben Rama moment, besides obviously his his penalty in the final. The penalty. I I must say I loved his goal against United at home when oh, De Gea yeah. absolutely spilled it, just because it's so funny, and we ended up going on to win. So. Shout out to Benny for that. What do you say about four nows? What's your favorite moment or moments? Because I've got moments for days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously him being uh, the whole uh, West Ham are massive is hilarious um, in terms of personal moments. But I think you shed a few tears at all for the for the videos on Twitter. Nah, I did. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it was nice to see see the video, and I'll talk about yeah. that in a second because uh, I'm about to be the most hated man again in a, a, in a few minutes when we get to that. But um, <laughs> but I think my favourite moment is uh, when he scored his absolute peach of a goal. Um, oh God, who was it Not against? Uh, no, uh, uh, Lester. No, oh, Villa deflection. No, no, I've forgotten the team. How bad is that? Um, Bournemouth, oh scorpion kick? No, no, it wasn't a scorpion kick. Uh, I think it was during COVID. No, was it not? It wasn't during COVID. It was, oh my God, I can't even remember. How bad is that? Uh, come back to me with that, but oh, I need to know which team it was. But he scored a great goal. For me. Now I can't remember who it was against. For me, I have many fond memories of four nows, mostly them off the pitch, but I thought he had some very quality moments on the pitch as well. Um, the Alkmaar goal, obviously, that will go down in folklore. Same with Ben Rama in the final. But ugh, Pablo, for me, just had so many nice moments for me. His his goal versus Leicester when he just takes one of the most perfect touches I've seen out of out of the air. Like a, the ball's 100 feet in the air, dropping down, takes it down, scores. Um, one that I think not a lot of people remember or look back on his assist in Mark Noble's last home match against city, his assist from yes. the halfway line was absolutely naughty in my opinion. And, um, and then obviously the, the scorpion kick Bournemouth, um, very emotional one as he wasn't playing a lot. And when he scored, he just kind of let everything all out. But Pablo for me, Oh, he's going to be missed so much. He just, he really adopted I, our traditions and our ways, and he now, really is one of us now, in my opinion. Yeah, I now know who it was against. Who he who scored? Was? <laughs> it was uh, it was the team he loves playing against all the time. Oh, he Liverpool three goals against the Liverpool, yeah. Oh, mate, how can I forget his goals against Liverpool? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah, wow, I wow, can't wow. believe I forgot it was Liverpool. I was like, <laughs> which one was it? He's well, uh, obviously, I like the one during COVID, but I think it was actually the year after. Was it twenty twenty two? Just on the edge, just on the inside At of the home box. When he puts it right under Allison's arm. Yes, exactly. And that for me was it was a peach of a goal. But um, 
Yeah, he scored a great goal that year. I couldn't remember if it was COVID year or the year after, but I knew it was against someone. I just had to quickly have a have a little gander and look it up because I was like, who has he scored? That was so I, good. You know what? I, like, I, I know it was a regular. I couldn't remember remember either while you're trying to figure it out, so I'm not even going to act like I'm smart. Or anything, but <laughs> to, leave, to leave things off, like we said, people, Ben Rama off to Lyon, Fournals off to Batiste. Um, and we'll leave it off with this, Clive. Where do you think we go from here for the rest of the season? Well, just quickly before I do that, I, I, the one thing that I will oh, probably yes, get hated please. on, yes, um, obviously Fornals did the exact thing that, you know, people were like, oh, we shouldn't expect it from Rice, the video. I'm sorry. I, was there I, I for agree. Four, four and a, yeah, four and a half. That, that's why I said you would, uh, you would be uh, on board with this. Um, four and a half years from Fornals, who, I mean, he's not someone who, I mean, yes, he grew up in our... Uh, in our team um because he came in his early 20s but i mean if you compare it to declan rice who played what about six full seasons came through the latter years of the academy um after being dropped elsewhere yeah um and we couldn't even get our champion winning captain to give a goodbye video um so i think I, that really does speak volumes when i you i totally agree out. i totally agree and me personally I'm over. I think a lot of people are pretty much I think over a lot of people it. Are, but it's just it speaks a lot of volumes when we exactly. couldn't get that out of Rice, which says it really does probably show that Rice really did force that move, which is such a shame when you think about it. Um, if I think but, about it more, it's going to send me into an. I know. Viral. I know. I know. But we're, but in we're, terms of where we go, yeah. Because um, I know you. That's where you want to get onto. Um. I, oh, it, it's a tough one because we, in terms of four nows, it would have needed to happen anyways. We've got too many midfielders and yeah. last night's game was proof of that. Um, but Ben Rama, I think we have, we would have been better off doing it in the summer, even if it was at a cut price because we yeah. don't have really any left wingers. Um, so we have sold ourselves short there, I think. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I mean, look, we can only see the season how it is. Obviously, we know what the prime position is to fill in the summer. Yep. And I don't think it'll be a loan deal. It'll be a straight purchase. And we will probably get a left winger. I do hope it's not Jota. I really don't want him. I, um, I, I don't think it will be. I think it'll be a lot more wiser of a purchase. Yeah, exactly. And I think when you actually look at the left wingers that we were um, chasing or hunting down, I... I my thing is the I've forgotten the fella what he's called the the one that comes from the same sort of um, setup as Kudus. Um, oh, Roseman. Yeah, he um, look. Yes, he might get better as years go on. My issue with him is he wouldn't set in the system for a good couple more years. So we yeah. need someone that's going to fit into that slot straight away. And then on top of that, he's in a in the Danish league, like, yeah. I'm sorry, but he's not done much damage to really suggest that fee is worth it. I'd rather we risk it in the summer for cheaper price or for free or whatever might come of that. And then in terms of Jota, if you're not willing to move because you're worried about coming to the UK because you're going to get taxed on all of your Saudi um, yeah. funds that you've made so far, you've made your own bed. It's and long. You can lie, and you can lie in it, as far as I'm concerned. I know that seems so bad, but he's decided... I mean, he's not even playing for the Saudi team because they can only play six um, yeah. players from other countries. And he's not been chosen. And it's a European championship year. We've got the Euros in the summer and he yeah. will probably not be in the Portugal squad because of it. So yeah. that was his opportunity. Yeah, so for me, I think, yeah, for me, all we can really do is just look towards the summer and uh, we got to really yeah. invest in that position because that will that's our weakest right now and it'll be our it weakest is. then. So uh, and I think I don't actually th I know there's fans that are worried that are oh, are we you know what if we don't qualify for Europe next season but I don't actually think it will matter like if we don't get Europe next season we'll still be able to pull the same caliber of players I think we so, have to be I more agree. yeah because I think if you look at it ultimately we've had three seasons of of Europe already in a row so we're showing that we're able to challenge up there and it's just the case of maintaining it in order to maintain it Yes, there'll be players that will join that will probably be happy to miss Europe for a season or two in order to, 
help us achieve those goals. So I'm not too worried. I think I'd be more worried if we can't hold on to players like Paqueta. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think that about wraps up from us. Thank you, everyone, for That's tuning in. And uh, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, smash a like on the video, hit the bell notification. And if you'd like to help us further, there is a membership link in the description. And roll on Sunday, absolute corker of a match coming up. In my opinion, the most important match of the season. And I think it's really going to tell tell us what to expect from the rest of the season. And that's it. We will see you guys later. Take care. Be safe.